Hey everybody, hello everybody, and welcome to our London Calling live stream. Thank you for joining us. We've got a few in the chat room tonight. Um, but of course, this is London Calling, and uh, this is kind of like a, a worldwide uh, web of people coming in and joining me uh, to help me host uh, London's Calling. Uh, and especially at the moment, I think it's quite important actually, all sorts of people uh, being involved in trying to get more of a, or add a little bit of oomph into the Lego community. So we're gonna have people popping in and popping out of um, of this stream tonight. But first up, uh, let me introduce you. Uh, I'm gonna go uh, clockwise around uh, my screen. Uh, in the top right hand corner, we have uh, Titanium J52. Hello everybody. Uh, what, are you, what are you gonna be doing tonight, Titanium? Uh, right now I am working on a Ninjago display mock based on season one, Ninja versus Serpentine. Good stuff. Good to, uh, I mean, you you are, and anybody watching, uh, if you need to know anything at all about Ninjago, Titanium J52 is your man. Um, moving around, of course, anti-clockwise, uh, we have um, the genius, uh, the man, the trickster, the notorious Lego Lomaniac. Lego Lomaniac. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Happy to be here. It's good. Uh, Great to have you here, my friend. And um, you're from Northern Europe. Uh, whereabouts uh, exactly in Northern? What country are you from, mate? I am, uh, wait, what's it called again? Well, I, uh, I'm i living in Oslo from in Norway. So, uh, yeah, and the winter just disappeared. <laughs> ah, just, just, in, just in time, I'd say, most probably. But uh, no, that's good. It's great to have you here, mate. Um, and Lego Maniac does some fantastic stuff. Um, do check out his website. Another person who I highly recommend as well is my 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 good friend and my wingman, Brandon from Brick Hive. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> um, I was just getting ready to, to, to type in the comments, but I'll just say it. Uh, hi, Nathaniel and Winterbricker. How y'all doing? Good to see you guys here. Welcome along to the stream. And I, I can actually introduce somebody else now. So um, here we go. Uh, a good friend of the channel and someone who I recently streamed with uh, earlier on this week. Uh, is a good friend. Uh, we have our girl, Moto. Hey, hey Moto. Hey, Hello. Hey. What's happening? I am joined by a special guest today. Come on over, special guest. <laughs> Uh, it's good to have you here, my friend. You look, are you, um, don't get me wrong, but you look like you're um, doing some sort of industrial washing of your Lego. <laughs> no, it's just where I build rent from the laundry, laundry stuff in the basement. Ah, now I, I don't know, uh, Moto, if you've actually met Lego Lomaniac, but I often think that Lego Lomaniac is the European version of you. Um, oh, really? uh, very wise and very technical uh, when it comes to all things Lego. So, um, so yeah, so I'm looking forward to you guys uh, you know, chatting away, doing your thing, building, and, um, well, probably showing uh, the likes of me and Brandon uh, how, to, how, to do it, how to do it, how to build. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, what I'll do is I uh, missed your email originally, so let me get the tripod set up a little bit better for today's session. Oh, that's all right, mate. If you need, if you need this is, when it comes to um, this particular stream, uh, London's calling, um, people can hop in and hop off. It's as simple as that. It's uh, it, 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 we, especially in this uh, at this moment in time as well. I think it's really good that people pull together uh, in the community and stuff like that. And uh, we've got some great people uh, also in the chat tonight. Nathaniel, I'm Nathaniel. Thanks for coming. Winter Bricker, how you doing? Great to have you here. And uh, yeah, we've got ourselves some good peeps out there. So um, so yeah, so I'm going to be I'm going to be continuing on with my ATAP plus. So just to recap where I got to last last night, I finished off this, uh, which is the uh, uh, which is one of the front legs. If I just pop myself on sorry, just for a moment, there we go. We've got it there. That's one of, that's one of the the legs there. That's a big leg. That is a big leg. Um, I, well, I tell you what, actually, I can. Um, I'll show you the other one because there are two. So I, I kind of, I, I built another one today just to kind of get myself back on schedule. And um, so if I, if I just put this into some sort of scale, I've got the, this one, or rather the uh, first order one. So this is the first order 
uh, equivalent of an APAT. It's, it's, much, it's much smaller uh, than the usual one. Uh, right. and, oh, I should say, it's much, in, 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 in universe, this is like twice the size of an ATAT. But I suppose it makes sense that I'm doing one a lot bigger. So here we go. So that, that's, the, that, that's like the height of it. And that's one of the legs on the plus one. You can see it's, it's even the, the leg itself is taller than the uh, the wow, <laughs> but so that that's um, I'm going to be build, building something that eventually will look a bit like this, uh, but a lot bigger. So that's uh, that's where I'm at. That's it. Yeah, that's and, awesome. Ah, uh, oh, Legos for Life's in the house. Welcome along, Legos for Life. Good to have you here, mate. Oh, by the way, Greg, I wanted to let you know I love the name of your stream. Oh, you like it, yeah? Yeah. Well, I'm glad. I, I've been I'm in an iron over a name for um, quite a while now, and it, it, was a, it was either going to be something, I don't know, a bit cheesy, like a hop on, hop off, and then I, I just thought to myself, oh, do you know what? I think now's a good time to come out with something like London Calling. Well, you know, I mean, because it makes sense, but also, yeah, it reminds me of the song, and you know, and I like that song a lot. So yeah, I got a good groove on it. And when, when I was doing some um, uh, promoting for this, uh, do you know what? It was just easy to throw that track into it because it's got that dun 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 dun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's great. It's cool, because when, when you listen to it, you kind of can't help but nod your head to it. Yeah. Well, uh, and London Calling, everyone heard the song, everyone kind of knows a little bit of what it's all well, about. Well, and like I said, it makes sense because, you know, you're in London, you know, and also, like, you're calling, you know, like, you're calling out to see exactly. who wants to join the stream, you know? Yeah. No, I've, I've got, um, I've got a, fr a friend of the channel as well, a guy, a guy called Brick Illustrator. He's, um, he's similar to, like, uh, Kevin Hinkleman, and uh, he's, he's actually going to be uh, doing me a, a, an image. Of, of what I want, I've got this idea of, of, of a particular logo, or at least a logo that I'm going to put inside a kind of normal picture. So uh, he's kind of working on that at the moment. But also as well, um, I've, got to, I've got to say, we, I was watching um, Kevin, uh, what's, his, what's he called? Uh, I'm just trying to think now what it's called. Let me bring it up on my banners because I, I promised him I would give him a shout out, but I think this is actually better. So. Every uh, every Friday, at least every Friday afternoon here in London, uh, he's doing Mr. Hinkle's Lord. Um, he does he does one of these uh, doodle doodle um, things. The doodle what, stream? Yeah, he does a doodle stream. He's, he's really good, and his his art is fantastic. And this this week, he drew me a Voltron, and I'm going to be doing a, a stream with Doc Sampson at some point. Uh, where we're both going to be draw, we're both going to be uh, building uh, Voltron. So uh, watch out for that. It'll probably happen in the next couple of next, I don't know, six weeks or something like that. And and the reason we're doing it is because Doc got Voltron for um, off a friend of his, and I I actually had it bought for me for my birthday. But my birthday uh, isn't until May, so I, I can't I can't touch it until then or, or do anything. <laughs> but so anyway, Kevin was doing one of his streams over the, uh, on Friday. I just said, do you mind drawing Voltron for us? And then it, it kind of occurred to me, oh, yeah, actually, we could use that for the stream. And Doc thought it was a good idea. So that's what we're doing. So if you ever want to check out, please do check out Mr. Hinkley's draw. Uh, his art is fantastic. And, uh, yeah, he can, he can do all sorts of art uh, at, at request as well. He's just really good. So you know check. what's funny about that, Greg, is uh, the Voltron thing. So yeah. the, the shout out video I just did, um, Mr. Hinkle is in it. And uh, one of the pictures I used when, when I was talking about him and stuff was, yeah, that Voltron head that he was drawing. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant, mate. That, that is it. That's a great link. So, so yeah, uh, you know, what? I, I, said, I said to Kevin, I said, do you, can I pay him for it? He said, no, 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 it's cool. Um, so I said, look, well, at least I can do, Kevin, is uh, give you a little promo on, on the stream. So, um, so that's all right. So I like it. Uh, um, that's good. So please do check him out. He, he, as far as London's concerned, he streams, uh, I think it's something like 12.30 or something like that. So I guess it's kind of in the morning uh, on the East Coast of America. So check him out. Uh, he's a good guy, really nice guy. Uh, he's well thought of in the Lego community as well. And uh and yeah, and and tonight we, you know, it's not it's not all about us. It, it, all, all, we're, 
all I'm doing here is just merely hosting the stream. That's why I'm pulling in all sorts of people. So anyone who's out there in the, in, in the chat tonight, please do uh, let us know if you want to talk about anything specific, or, you know, anything kind of like, I don't know, Mario, what you think of the new Fiat, um, hidden side in comparison to, you know, Mario. That, that's an interesting thing, what, what Lego is doing there. You've got this new gaming uh, thing that's coming out with Mario, where, whereby you create this, this unique map or this world, if you like, and then you kind of interact with it with this kind of um, Bluetooth digitalized uh, Mario. And then, of course, on the flip side, you've got hidden side, which uses your mobile phone with a special app and that. So if you want to chat about things like that, great. Throw the, throw, throw the questions at us. We've got some absolute geniuses. Oh, actually. Yeah, um, my, we, um, my son crushes the heck out of the hidden side. There you go. It's the first video game he's ever played. Oh, there's a Hinkle drawing right there. Yep. I got two um, of them. They're great. That's, that's Hinkle. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I ordered some. They're on their way. Yeah. See, I, 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 I have to ask Kevin, actually, does he, does he, can I get them from the UK from him? Otherwise, it's kind of too expensive, then obviously I can't do that. But uh, we'll see. But, yeah, he does stickers as well, folks, and his stuff is really good. And if you've got the likes of Titanium, I think i using them as well. And I know loads of other people, even Beyond the Brick. Beyond the Brick that's got over half a million subscribers, um, you know, a few a few more than me, anyway. Uh, they, you know, his stuff's excellent. So, um so yeah, so yeah, if you want to throw us any questions, um, Brandon's more than happy to answer them for us. <laughs> lay them on me, lay them on uh, me. But the main thing as well, you know, keep it nice and light. Uh, you don't have to be talking about anything too heavy. If you want to talk about COVID and how it's uh, affecting you and stuff like that, you know, we're all here, we're all in it together. And uh, yeah, eventually, if we all end up house bound or something like that, then, you know, we've got, we've got this to kind of link us all together. So, uh, so Rogue Transformation is wondering what everybody's building. Um, I mean, Greg, you told us about the ATAT. -AT. Yeah. Um, Jay, you wanna you wanna continue on that? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm working on a Ninjago mock here. Got this uh, nice little display of Ninja vs. Serpentine. I just uh, actually finished laying down the ice portion for Zane. Nice. I Let's, let's, let's have a look. Let's, let's, um, let's give you the screen, everybody. Titanium. Yeah, so we've got Zane here. He's freezing a couple of serpentine. One is uh, caught in ice, the other is slipping and falling. I've got some, some other things working here. I got Kai. I'm gonna close more serpentine around him. I got Jay up there in the corner. And I got Wu and Pythor, and then Cole's going to be doing something too, but I haven't finished that yet. Can you, um, see, I think Pythor is a pretty cool character, uh, probably because he's a, he's a big snake and he's, uh, he's got a very British accent. Can you hold him up to the camera and take a look. Yeah. yeah, this is original Pythor. So is there, yeah. is there a white version of him around? Because didn't yes, you get there is. something by the Devastator or something? Yeah, the Great Devourer. Let me. The Great Devourer. Does anyone in the chat actually follow Ninjago? Because I think it's a really good cartoon. I'm, I'm really getting into it. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to build some set from there. Now, so what, we what? have oh, White man. Pythor from Season 4. That dude's sweet. Doesn't that look good? Yeah. There's man. also the Day of the Departed version. The head's the same, but the, the printing's different. See, I think that is such a good-looking figure. Yeah, man, they make good-looking minifigures. They do. And then recently, Lego did a new version of the Purple Pythor for Legacy. Yeah, that was is last that, year. Uh, what one does that come? Is that coming in the? Um, Earth it uh, it comes in Ace Stormfighter and the Ultra Dragon. Oh, fantastic! Ooh. Oh, I, I got um, I bought uh, I bought a, a second hand set, and it and it arrived yesterday. And uh, let me put you back. Oh. Yeah, so I, I got this set. I, I actually, I very rarely buy secondhand uh, sets. I very rarely do, but I can't remember the name of it. And I can't remember the number of it, but it is a mech uh, titanium, and it's the one. Mm. It, the one, the mech is looks like a shark. Is it um? Let's see. Is it like just a full on shark? Carbidon. Carbidon. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, one. The Garmin Garmin. It's like a big white shark with two legs. Yeah, that's the Garmin on Garmin on Garmin on. 
That's the one. Yeah. You think I remember that, wouldn't you? <laughs> hey, Rogue Transformation. Good to have you in, mate. Winter Bricker. That is a lovely looking rose. <laughs> Winter Bricker. <laughs> She's, she's never going to forgive me, right? So many times I, I, I've been, I've been to bring that. How you doing, mate? And uh, uh, it, it, it'll, it'll teach me because I, I should really watch and look at people's avatars a little bit closer, but <laughs> I, I didn't. And uh, well, anyway, I, I, I deserve it. I love you, Mr. Ricker. Good to have you here. So, we got any questions? Okay, Legos Life, good in the you, everyone saying hi to each other. Rogue Transformation, hey, we Rogue Transformation. Good to have you here, Rogue Transformation. Are you working on anything at the moment? You usually work on pretty good, spectacular things. Let's know if you're working on anything at the moment, my friend. Cheza. And thanks, uh, and Cheza, always, um, I just want to say thank you as well for all the support you give our, give our channel. It's, uh, it really is much appreciated, my friend. Hey, Rogue Transformation, I like your channel, man. Cool. Yeah, you yeah. got awesome stuff. Yeah, man. I mean, I was already subscribed. I'm sure I've seen it before, but like I said, I'm subscribed to so many, so many people. Yeah, man. That's awesome. It is tough to keep up with everything after a while. Yeah. Oh, it is difficult. It is difficult. Let, let alone trying to keep up with what people are doing and do your own stuff as well. <laughs> oh look, there's a kitty cat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, come to say hello, yeah. Let's... Or help or disrupt. Oh, let's um <laughs> seems a lot nicer than my cat. What cat have you got? I just have just a regular house cat, but she's just very mean. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm just doing some sorting, not much going on here. <laughs> <laughs> so actually interestingly though, tell us how do you sort your um, your bricks, uh Legolomania? Oh, like I do now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, everything is sorted by type. I don't sort anything by color. As, because I don't have that much brick. So yeah. sorting by color would be very pointless. As, uh, it would mostly just contain a bunch of different different parts. So uh, yeah, so I'm, I sort by mostly plate tiles and bricks uh, because that's the majority of what my uh, parts are which probably is the same as many others yeah that was my problem in the beginning i was doing i was separating them all by color and yeah. then i had to go back and start separating them all by like tile you know brick yeah it's like it, it depends on your build style if if it's more like I need something that's red that fits here, you can go into your red drawer and search for whatever red uh, stuff. But most people would probably more, I need a two by two plate at this point and it needs to be red. Then you can go in your two by two plate and you easily find whatever color of, of part you need in this, this pile of bricks uh, when they're all the same type. Hmm. So tell us a little bit about your collection, uh, Legolomaniac, and tell us a little bit about a special gig that you've got coming up. <laughs> nice thing. Oh, yeah, there, I, found, uh, Greg. I found that email, by the way. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> you just ignored it. I guess Rick, I didn't want to join. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> no, no, so I didn't ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, you wanted to know about my collection? Yeah, well... About your collection. Well, I have a small collection of loose parts. Uh, I mostly... I mostly don't really build mocks of any kind. 
Uh, so the loose parts I have is most sort of spares and for prototyping individual mechanisms. Uh, because what I do build is mostly puzzles out of Lego. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so yeah, so I have uh, three three smallish or mediumish um, shelves, or you know those tool shelf racks. Uh, you know the ones with drawers like these. Yeah, I have a. I have three of those, which basically contain all my parts. Uh, and I have a uh, sort of toolbox with four, uh, four drawers in them, which contains most of my tiles, bricks, and plates. So when I do need to build anything, I take out that toolbox and have most of the stuff I actually need. Uh, I can show, show one of them. Yeah. I just take out this thing. And here I have everything I need of tiles. This is the tile drawer or tile box. Uh, everything, anything of flat val flat value. Flat yeah. tiles are the best uh, and are the best type of Lego block, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then I have one drawer for uh, plates and one for bricks. And one for uh, snot bricks, basically, or snot techniques. Very good. Very nice. Snot techniques, of course, being studs, not on top. As in, <laughs> you can build sideways, or which I mostly use for um, like decorating builds with plates on them. Um, yeah. Um. The rest of my collection is just sets that are all put in storage because I have no place to actually display them. Oh wow! You must have. Do you have quite a lot of sets in storage? Yeah, current. Uh, yeah. So I have a spreadsheet with everything. I think I have about three hundred and fifty sets. Wow. Um. Yeah, about about half of them I made a video of. <laughs> The rest are old sets or uh, sets I've inherited, or some some few large sets I haven't done a video on yet, which um, which I just doesn't, haven't gotten around to yet. For example, I have the bucket wheel excavator, which I just haven't. That's in a built condition, so every time I look at it, I, I'm like, yeah, I have to take that apart in order to fill in the time lapse of building it, and <laughs> taking apart technique sets is the worst. Oh yeah, do you know that's one that's one thing I've actually never had to do in my life is take apart a Technic set. Oh yeah, like if if you can avoid it, like it's just just sell it and buy a new one. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, oh, it's it's worse, especially large sets like like the buckle you like to your, your fingers will will hurt. For several weeks afterwards, it's oh, wow. absolutely no fun. It's, yeah, it's it's because of all the tiny um, what do you call them? the tiny pins that you have to pull out and yeah, yeah. It, very you use like a special tool for that. Yeah, this thing. <laughs> Special fingers, I like it. Oh, uh, well, not more than just having uh, like a Technic axle that you just push things out with. Yeah. What, not much more else you can do with that. There's no fancy techniques or anything. You just have to <laughs> pull it out. <laughs> do, you, do you have a preference over what... Um... What we build? Do you prefer Technics over Lego, or Lego over Technics? Um, that is a difficult question, really. It's um, it's it's it depends more on what what I'm in mood for. Yeah. Yeah. That's would, true. Yeah, but I would say I probably like normal sets better they have 
sort of more um, more imagination about them. Techniques that usually build, are things built from real life. Yeah, I was going to say they, they are generally, aren't they? Yeah. So with uh, with other sets, you can have anything, any imagination, and uh, with colors and anything. While the Technic set just like you have, yeah, bucket wheel excavators, race cars, and and all that stuff, which is good and they're great sets. But yeah, I, yeah, I prefer just as I do with um, like video games. I prefer playing in. Do, yeah, uh, using stuff that is not of real life. Mm. Like uh, with video games, I tend to avoid like racing games or sports games or or those simulator games. Uh, I'd rather do something that is imaginary. Yeah, and uh, well, you're, you're always doing those um, those boxes, those uh, magical boxes. <laughs> so, how did you get in? How did you get into that? Oh, my puzzle boxes? Yeah. Um, that's because of Jacob from Brick Breakery, actually. Oh, yeah. Now, he, he's got a good, really good panel. So please do check out anyone who's watching uh, Brick Bakery's uh, panel. He, he does some very, very good stuff. Yeah, he does. And he's, such a nice, he's such a nice guy. He's just he generally does. enthusiastic about everyone and supporting everyone. No, he's a top bloke. He's a top bloke. Yeah. Uh, he's very supportive, actually. So, how about you, Brandon? I mean, you're you're the man with a city. Uh, have you got like a, a backlog or, or, or a collection of loose Lego bits, or do you, do you like, buy things specifically for your uh, your city? Um, yeah, it's all kind of sporadic and random. So, uh, my city's kind of at full capacity right now. <laughs> there, there's not really too much more I'm going to be able to, to put in it. There's, I mean, there's a little bit of space uh, that I have reserved. A little, I have a little space reserved, and then there might be a little tiny space for something else. But other than that, the only thing I can do at this point is just to make the city look better. So once I get the train done, well, once I get the train running, then I'm going to stop working on the city as much and start working on my, my Star Wars mock. But, uh, but when I come back to the city, uh, the next thing I'll probably do, uh, besides some finer detail, is start putting lights in it. Mm. Uh, and once I get lights in it, then I'll start probably building like, like skyscraper type buildings. Wow! Like make it an actual like city, city, you know, uh, instead of just kind of a town area. Um, but so that like, so the city capacity, like I said, it's about full. Um, so then. As I've been putting more and more shelves on the wall, I've just been getting stuff I can like display. Uh, so obviously, I'm a big fan of Star Wars ships. Well, just ships in general. I mean, I got Marvel ones and everything else. But so uh, I got a lot of those displayed. But now I'm getting into like the creator vehicles. Uh, ever since ever since I built that Batmobile, uh, I got the Fiat recently. Um, so yeah, I see more in my future. Uh, they look very good on um, sitting on shelves. Um, <laughs> well, I like yeah. the videos that you do. You do, you do these um, videos or updates on what's on your shelf. I think that's quite cool, man. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I'll have another one here soon because I just got a uh, bigger display case for my minifigure for my birthday. Oh, so that's... between between that and then, like, I just put these shelves up not too long ago. Um I'm getting ready to put a couple more up here, and then I got a corner one I'll be putting up, and then just a few more things like pictures. So I'd say probably within about a month, I'll probably have another updated one. With you. Uh, where did you get your shelving unit from, mate? Um, you mean like these ones? Yeah. Uh, I got those from Ikea. Oh, okay, that's quite cool. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of them I got, from, I think, from Home Depot. I'm pretty sure I got them from Home Depot. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's pretty much how it's going because there are some sets that I like to buy, like even right now, but I'm just like, they, I don't know where I'd even put them. Uh, I mean, I guess some stuff I could put on shelves that I would normally put in the city. Like I don't, you know, I've been wanting to get the bookstore. Yeah. I mean, but the problem, you know, the problem is like everybody else knows they're expensive. 
So you can only spread yourself so thin. They are. The thing is, it's always funny. See, you made um, you made an interesting point. And uh, actually, uh, welcome to welcome to the stream, Dead Dead Channel. Hi, Dead Channel. <laughs> I'm loving the um, I'm loving the uh, the avatar as well, my friend. Welcome to the <laughs> Good to have you here. Hey, Gala Gag, welcome to the stream. Oh, Doc's here as well. Hey, Nate. Okay, we'll be back later. Good to see you, Doc. And don't forget, you're welcome to pop in, Doc. Um, you have the link, my good friend. Um, yeah, in, in, now, for anyone who's not heard of uh, BrickHive, and I'm pretty doubtful that nobody has, um, anyone who's new to it or watching this back in 20 years from now, uh, please check out BrickHive's uh, vlogs that he does. He does his vlogs. And I'll tell you what, what I like about your vlogs, Brandon, and I, and I know they are hard work to do. <laughs> But what I will do is that I, I just like listen to your thought processing and you think of things and you're doing things that a lot of AFOLs have thought, thought of anyway. And, you know, it, it, it's kind of, one, it's nice to sort of know that somebody else is in that kind of same mindset as well and trying to figure out how to do things. And you touched upon something, uh, I, I don't know if it was this week or last week's one, whereby you was, you were saying that you want to display some stuff, but the uh, plastic display stain, the stains are quite expensive. Uh, and, I, and I agree, I think they are, so, which is why I've, I've always gone and got myself um, bricks and created the stain for them because they're, otherwise they're like, you know, really expensive. And if you buy a set and then you buy one of those stands, you know, it, kind of, it just keeps inflating the price for it. Right. Yeah, um, it's it's very interesting. I mean, I, I don't know. It, it's a lot of times I, I have no idea what to think about a lot of stuff. I just uh, you know, like those blogs are basically so I don't have I'm not I don't make another channel because um, I mean I put Lego related stuff in them, but it's not a Lego related video. Um, it's just like I said before, it's just moments throughout my life. But yeah, it's a lot of my thoughts on stuff that really sometimes isn't Lego related. But yeah, man. You're, I almost didn't. I almost didn't make one. I, I still have to actually finish editing my new one, but I almost didn't make one this week. I almost just called it quits on the vlogs. <laughs> well, I mean, because they're not. They're not really my most popular videos by any means. Um, I know, like the people that like them really like them. But yeah. like I said, I don't know. I'm still going to keep doing them, but I don't know. We'll see what happens eventually in the future. Like I said, they're just, they're, 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 they're difficult for different reasons. Um, I mean, if that's all I did, if that's all I focused on, it'd be a lot easier, but trying to remember to, you know, it's, it's even prevented me from making certain videos. Yeah. Like, because I, I generally don't like to double dip into stuff. Mm -hmm. um if that makes any sense like if i let's say i film myself going to walmart to get some lego sets or whatever that's that's part of that vlog i don't want to like take that out also keep it in the vlog and then also use it for a separate video you know what i mean that's yeah. um but that's just me I, I, and i actually have done it a little bit before yeah i, I i've done it I, even recently you actually picked up on it on, on the on a comment and what I did, what I did once, I did, I did a review and a speed build, and and then I did a, like a pure speed build. But what I did was, but when I did the, the the kind of pure speed build as opposed to the other, uh, I kind of added a lot more elements into it, a lot more scenes that I hadn't used. Mm -hmm. so if you used to watch the center part of it, yes, yeah, it, it, it's the same, except for I I I've done it at a different speed and all that kind of stuff, but. There is a lot more at the beginning and a lot more at the end. So, it, 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 well, yeah, I mean, you integrate it into certain ways, also. You know what I mean? But yeah, you add content. Like I even noticed. And correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe I might just been daydreaming. But it seemed like like the second I can't remember which one it was, but like the second video you made of one of them, like the speed build was actually a little faster. Yeah. Than than the one before, and um, and I I don't know, just that and your description and stuff. Because I've thought about doing that in a way. Like maybe just combining the speed builds and reviews. So, cause you know, like on my speed builds at the very end, I'll display them, you know, and do the circle thing and show them close up. I, I keep wondering if maybe I should do like a review as I'm doing that instead of just showing it, you know what I mean? But I don't know. It is what it is. What's up, Robin? 
Good to have you here, Robin. It's um, yeah, it's uh, Robin. Robin's uh, congratulations, mate. He's uh, uh, recently become a dad. So, uh, oh, congratulations! Yeah, fantastic. So I hope you're safe and well, my friend. And uh, and mum's doing well. Nice. Hopefully, are you are you getting a reasonable night's sleep, Robin, or is it uh, early days for all that? It's amazing. Congratulations. <laughs> Moto, let's take a look. Let's see what you're up to, my friend. Uh, yeah, Moto's always got a lot going on. Turn the camera on, okay, so I can kind of oh, wow. view it from the other side. Give me a sec. Just a second. I turn everything around. All right. Whoop. Oh. <laughs> That's it. Cam on. Cam on. Come on. Button. <laughs> Let's go. All right. So I finished the spaceship in the stand. It was always nice. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. That's right. I remember that. That looks excellent. Yeah, so it's done. Oh, I'll go ahead and straight for this. I wound up using um, the Jurassic Park here. Oh, That's man, that is really awesome. I am so glad I got to see this done, because I remember you were working on it um, last time I saw it. Yeah, it only took a week. I challenged myself to finish it in a week. It's just such an interesting, interesting, unique design. Like, you use, yeah, I mean, you, you use such random elements to your builds. It's like, it's so cool. <laughs> Yeah, I, what I'm doing is I'm like combining all the techniques I've kind of learned over the last three years and then just blasted it out because I'm testing to see how fast I can go once I've learned some things. So I learned a couple new techniques here, which I was showing you in your stream. And then I managed to flow it up with the rotation the other day. So these are all techniques. Fantastic, mate. I think it was yeah. great. And yeah, then I've got like a little... Your have you got a preference on technique over Lego, or do, do you like the combination of the two? I combine them fairly effortlessly now. So if I'm doing a structure, right. um, I core the whole thing out in Technic, and then I wrap it in system. See you soon, Robbie. And then Take also, Bye, Robin. Well, yeah, and then the the stream, we're, um, we're, we're, we're taking a look at Moto's... Um, Crafty work. I tell you what, I like the um, the classic space logo there on the uh, on the sort of uh, on the left hand side. I think that's it. Look at that. What a beautiful yeah, logo. Yeah, those are real bricks. Those are four vintage bricks. I always try to throw some vintage bricks in there. And then I'm trying to highlight the new dot system as well. So I've got like a color scheme going on in the back. Oh yeah. And then the oh, sword play. Uh, Actually, my feathers, you know, I just mix a lot of different techniques and styles. Is anyone in the, uh, let us know in the chat if anyone's collecting dots at the moment. They seem to be doing quite well, actually, out there. Oh, yeah, it's, it, they were selling out before everything went to hell. Yeah. <laughs> before the, uh, before the uh, Mad Max apocalypse, dots were the thing. Yeah. Let me show you where I started today. Oh, go ahead. So I figured I wanted to have a really large antenna to go with it because I had a day left over. So what oh, I did cool. oh. is... Wow. I'm gonna, are they actually Lego, official Lego parts? Yeah, these are Lego parts. They're vintage oh, kind of. Cool. They're, they're an older alien invasion type thing. Um, I just ordered on BrickLink two more of these big panels so I can swap these guys out. And it'll be one big translucent green. <laughs> And then I'm using clips with bars uh, to go from here out in a structure. Robot bodies, lightsaber blades, um, and then handlebars, bars, the flags. And these are vintage as well. But they come around and they clip in to a brick reinforcement structure. So I could get a nice edge going around the whole thing in white. And then the holographic stickers, I didn't put those on, it came, in, came with the pieces. Um, and then using a, the balloon pieces. 
the golden clip and bar method. We meet up here, teapot, clips in a different structure, and then coming up to here. And I have a, I have a really cool piece I'm gonna put in here, I just haven't done it yet. But I wanted to show that the structure can stand without a central core. Yeah. Kind of like a radio antenna. And then I'll be clipping four of these guys on here shortly. And then Very nice. I, almost had it on. I almost had it on, but you guys caught me a little off guard. But this will be the very end of it. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. Space stuff. Well, I love space stuff. You know me, I'm, I'm like, I'm like Benny and Ford. <laughs> I have a spaceship all day long. I really always enjoy looking at your builds, Moto, because uh, honestly, yeah. I, I mean, cause one, they're awesome. And like I said, they're unique, but not just unique. I mean, I'm sure there are other people that do similar stuff, but I just don't see anybody design the stuff that you design, man. I mean, you take such interesting pieces and put them together and make yeah, them I, look like a I, work of art, you know? Yeah, I, I build weird. Luckily, a lot of people like the weird. But yeah, there's <laughs> well, nothing, it's, there's it's, nothing it's, really it's like different. It's so cool to see different stuff here and there, man. And it's not mm. just that it's different, but it's good. Like, it'd be one thing if you just, like, threw a bunch of stuff together. It didn't make any sense. You know what I mean? But it's you build some interesting, interesting, like, spaceship, man. Yeah, it's cool. It's fun. And, uh, yeah, yeah that, that's kind of my week. It's, um, uh, you know... To their credit, Flynn and Richard from the from the show showed up in the live stream I was on, and we said, "Hey, you should you should try doing something really fast rather than just planned it out. You know, try to do something that's really really quick just to mm -hmm. see what happens." And this is kind of what I've been coming up with. That is pretty good, man. Yeah, hats off to those guys too. They're kind of forcing it. But yeah, that's what I'll be jamming on for the remainder of this thing, and. If anybody has any technical questions or assembly questions, I can do a, I can pop things off or, you know, tell you how I did it. Yeah, man, it. please do. I tell you, um, like, just like Lego the Maniac, uh, Moto is incredibly, incredibly talented uh, when it comes to doing uh, creations and just doing stuff. Um, and something, something that Moto is particularly good at is just getting stuff out of his head and turning it into bricks. And, uh, yeah, it's great. Yeah, all I ask is um, if someone does comment, you're going to have to read it off to me because I, I do all this on a mobile device. Uh, okay. Yeah, no problem, my friend. Any, anybody in the chat, please do fire away. Give, give us, uh, ask us a question. This is what we're here for. We're, we're not all about just here building stuff. We, we, uh, we're happy to answer any questions as well. Um, something that I've been watching recently quite a lot of is uh, Brandon uh, building uh, an ocean. In his, uh, in his Lego city. Uh, how's that going, Brandon? Uh, the ocean, you said? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I actually just ordered uh, another 3,000 pieces the other day. So Woo! That is a good brickling call to my friend. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know how long it'll hey take. Hey, guys. Yeah. Hey, guys. I didn't realize this, but the show's not over for my show and tell. I have a I have a tiny art director here who wants to show off a build, if you don't mind. No, no, no. Come on. Come on. Yeah, we're gonna hold it a little bit there. Hold on. I, I put you on. What did you make? What the heck is that? <laughs> what did you make? That Wait. is so cool. What is this? There we what? go. Oh, he used. Oh, he used the shoulder pads from the fix. I was gonna say, what piece is that? And he ran. Oh my gosh, he ran. What did you run? You ran a technical element. Oh, Dude. Oh yeah, you ran the technical element through. And then he... <laughs> that looks like an awesome engine, buddy. I'm well, you know what I would do with it? I would make it like... I would connect it to like an arm of a robot. And that would be an awesome cannon. Yeah. Did you hear that? High five. All right. You're done. Okay. So that's it for... That's it for Tiny Eric Director. All right. <laughs> Okay, right, right. That's the uh, that's the talent for tonight, uh, boys and girls. So thank you for tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I noticed a couple people have been mentioning the whole staying at home thing. Um, 
I am wondering about me as well, because I still am currently working. Um, that could very well change, and I even have a little bit of time. I might just take off just to be safe. Uh, um, but if I do have some time off, especially if it's like a period of time for like a couple weeks or something, I'm going to be making a lot of videos. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be streaming a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, I started to do tutorials on each part, uh, each stage of my build just because, um, you know, I, I work in cybersecurity, you know, software company. So I've been well, working at home, sitting on the floor. I don't really have a home office. And every once in a while, I have to make my le legs, you know, not stop being done. Yeah. So I stop and cut a quick video. And then while it's uploading, I keep working. And then now it's spring break. So I'm spending the whole spring break just locked inside with maybe a couple day hikes out here in Colorado, but I hear you. Yeah. Well, the good thing is like, um, you know, obviously this is affecting everybody in different ways. Um, but at least for the ones that are, or for, or for us that are quarantined or we're just trying to be safe um, and we're staying indoors and all that, the silver lining is at least we have each other. Um, like you said about the tutorials, you know, like Greg's having his stream today. So we got to jump on that. You know what I mean? Just, you know, just, we have each other to keep each other company and occupied, at least to some degree. Um, oh, no, I completely agree, hundred percent. And honestly, even without the whole pandemic thing going on, man, I don't even know what I would do without all of you guys. Now, I mean, like, um, well, because you know, like I said before, like I didn't have anybody to share my love of Lego with before. It was just me. Even when I went to like the brick fair and stuff like that, I mean, I would say hi to people, but I didn't know anybody. You know what I mean? And it would have been really awesome to go with somebody, you know, and be excited with somebody, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But so, yeah, that's the best thing I've gotten out of all this, man. It just made a lot of cool friends. Well, I, I, I got to, I got to say, um, you know, people like you, Garlic Aid as well, Lego um, Maniac, Titanium, Moto. You know, I, I regard everyone as family, to be honest. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, you know how we always joked around, how we're like, you know, like, what what were we saying? Like, cousins or something from overseas? Or yeah, something. <laughs> we do. And, you know, um, if, if anyone isn't aware, uh, Brandon and I uh, do this. Um, it's kind of unique. Uh, well, it's unique, actually. But no one else does it. Uh, a, live, a particular live stream where it's kind of mostly just me and him. But we do get the odd guests on as well. But it's it's... It's it's not really we don't get like bundles of people on or anything like that. Most of the time it's it's just us two. And that's the transatlantic live stream. So uh and the nice thing with that is is that we co-host it. So what one one uh we talk, we, we do at least one a month anyway. Sometimes we do like two or three. But um yeah, we can, we can look out for that and we co-host it as well. So one time it'll be Brandon and then it'll be me and you know, so we, we switch it up. And yeah, that works quite nicely, doesn't it? Yeah. No, it's really cool like that. I, I think it's very interesting. Um, he's, our, it's great... he's, our, he's our British mother, brother from another mother. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, the great thing about it, because obviously international streaming isn't new. You know what I mean? Like I see a lot of people that have streams that they have – international guests on there uh aussie brick check is a good example um you know I, i've seen many of my friends on on her stream normally it's my ones that either stay up really late in america or my friends overseas that go uh, over to her streams but um yeah so but i don't think and i'm totally wrong about this but i think greg's right as far as what we do is we both co-own an international stream um so I, I don't know. I don't think anybody's done that. I mean, it's not like it's some 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 breakthrough scientific, <laughs> you know, like thing. I mean, but it is really nice that we have something that's unique. Uh, yeah, and it's, and, and it's a fun thing. And it's a it's a good name for it as well. You know, when you say the transatlantic live stream, yeah. uh, people think of you and me. So yeah. Nice. Well, I remember when we were throwing around ideas for, you know, like the thumbnail, you know, our logo and then the name. And yeah, it's it's really cool, though, man. Like I said, it's it's an experience. And, and the great thing, the one thing I do like about it probably the most isn't just that our interaction, but we get to pull 
viewers from different areas, you know what I mean, yeah. together. We do. And let us know in the in the in the um, in the chat, guys and girls, if you, if you've got anything you'd ever like to see me and Brandon do, we're always up for ideas. We've got we've got a little idea sort of plodding along in the background. It might even be some we do separately from the transatlantic live stream. So that's it. Uh, it's the Brick Brick League International. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. Well, well, the thing is, right? Yeah, I mean, you look at look at look at tonight, right? I I did I did this stream last night. Uh, this is part two of the stream. And this last night we had people from uh, West Coast America, Britain, uh, two people from Britain actually, which was nice for Solo Brick Builder. So do check out his channel as well. Uh, and Solo, if you're out there, pop in and say hi. Uh, and we had someone from Australia. I mean, that is just mind blowing what, what we're doing there. You know? Yeah. And, and, and that's why I want London Calling to be all about. What Brandon and I do, we get one, maybe two guests on from time to time. 90% of the time, it's just all me. And we're just making off stuff and kind of doing what we do now. So, well, because, you know, since we, we, we split it, obviously, you know, we want to make sure we both have a controlled, fair environment. You know what I mean? Like, you know, obviously on my stream, I can get a little wild with everybody and stuff. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> which, you know, I turn it to step over any boundaries or any lies. But, uh, but obviously, that's not... The same environment I want at the transatlantic stream, you know what I mean? That's we want a more controlled, uh, and you know, uh, I guess you would call it civil, you know, <laughs> environment. Um, <laughs> hey, Greg, I wanted to actually answer a couple of questions that Gallagate was asking me. Ah, sorry, um, no, no, you're all right. Um, I just, just, I just, I just saw him a second ago. Um, so she asked me if I was class, classed as essential workers. Um, that's kind of a weird question because. I work for the apartment industry. So, A, if there's emergencies, you know, whether it's a flood, somebody doesn't have heat, you know, or something like that, um, or if somebody is moving into an apartment uh, or moving out, uh, there are certain important procedures. Like, some things can wait, but other things can't really wait. Uh, so, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know what's going to happen yet. We have them um, we, over here in, in the UK. We're given like special, um, I wouldn't say special law, but we're, we're, everything that's happening at the moment, we are giving a priority to people that are in nursing. So we've got, we've got uh, companies, we've got um, companies that are like giving up uh, rooms and stuff like that. So we get hotels. So if you're saying, right, well, we've got no one that can come in our hotels. So what we do is we'll give them out free to anyone who works in the NHS. Um, my wife's sister works in education, and because there's children that, um, that whose parents work in those services, they can still go to school because uh, you know uh, those services need people to be there, uh, which is like super important. So I, I, I do think, and I, I don't know if I'm looking too far ahead here. But one, it, it keeps blowing my mind what's happening, and two. I honestly feel that this, what is going on, will reset the world because I cannot think for the life of me when, certainly not in, in, in my lifetime, when we've had wars, you know, we'll have, you know, all these sort of wars going on around the world. But this war is the planet versus this virus. And it just blows my mind thinking about it. But I mean, I could be thinking a bit too deeply about it, but. I do no, think, no, I mean, it's, it's, look, it's nature, man. Yeah, universally, we are, we are up against this thing. Do you know what I mean? Whether you're from Russia, whether you're from America, whether you're from the UK, Argentina. Yeah, the, the, invisible, does, the invisible enemy does not discriminate, man. It does not care oh, where no. you're from. <laughs> um, and yeah, Gallagade, it was super, super annoying, and it made me very upset seeing a lot of these spring breakers. Oh yeah, um, man! Like, dude! Like, seriously, what? Because yeah. I mean, and look, I, 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 I want to believe a lot of them just don't understand the dangers of it. Like, they, they, they think like, oh well, it can't hurt me, so you know, it'll be okay or something like that. Because um, obviously, yeah, you guys aren't the ones that need to really worry. You know, it's people that have immune immunity deficiencies or. Or they're elderly or something like that 
you know, you don't want to give it to them. But yeah, Gallagher, I, I, oh my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> so, I know. So I'm in the same place. <laughs> because that's why, that's, that's how it keeps spreading. You know what I mean? Look, I know it's difficult. But for everybody, there's no doubt about it, man. And like I've said, it, it hurts people in different ways. Some, some of it's more financially, some of it's more mentally, you know, cabin fever or depression or, you know, or maybe it's work stuff or whatever the case may be. It's hurting everybody. But with the exception of very essential people that need to be out, everybody should just be locked down, man, for at least a couple of weeks. Try and let this burn through, you know? Yeah. I mean, because that's the only way to try and because we yeah. don't have a vaccine, so we have to try and stay away from each other until it's, it's gone. What, what, what we're trying to do in the UK, uh, and Garlicke, please, every, a, anyone who wants to dive in and talk about COVID nineteen, you know, let's talk about it. It's good to get these things off our chest. Yeah, yeah. Um, what we're trying to do in, in the UK, in, and, and I believe they're trying to do this in America as well. And and uh, what what we're trying to do is. I think about 80% of our population is going to end up getting this. What we're trying to do is stop there being a spike whereby there's so many people ill, we haven't got the hospital resources to deal with it, you see. And, I mean, we're lucky in the UK. We've got free free medication. Um, in, America, in America, you don't have that. So you, you've got to be everyone, – everyone has got to be responsible for everyone. And I would hate to be – one of these uh, springies, I said, <clears throat> puts it, who who goes out, gets drunk, has a really good time, goes home with uh, the virus and gives it to their parents, their elderly grandparents or something like that. And God forbid they become very ill from it. And that is what people have to get through to their minds that they mustn't do. Yeah, it's a real pain. It's a real faff, and no one really wants to be doing it, but that's what we've got. They're the cards that have been dealt with us, and we've got to deal with it. And we've all got to pull together, as, as, as a not just as a nation, not just locally in a county or a, a country, but internationally. Share the information. Share how we can beat this virus. And, and I'm so hopeful from all that that the world will change for a better place thereafter. Anyway, I'll get I'll get off my soap box, my soap box. But uh, uh, I was reading what Gallagher said. Yeah, that it worries me because I'm a diabetic as well. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, it's um, everybody's got to be responsible about it, man. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Definitely, definitely, my friend. But um, if you guys out there want to want to chat about your experiences and stuff like that, please please, please throw, throw it our way. We this stream we are talking about Lego life. Love, you know. Well, you know, I, I noticed uh, Chris asked you, Greg, about, and I wanted to say something before you answer real quick, because Chris is asking about, like, don't you pay an ass load of taxes? Um, so before Greg answers that, I just want to say that Americans pay trillions of dollars in taxes. And a lot of people um, I talk to think that we don't have enough money to do certain things, but we do. We do. It's just the way, one, how we allocate our tax money, because we waste it on a lot of dumb stuff. Um, and two, making sure everybody pays the taxes they're supposed to pay. I mean, I'm sure we all know about how much taxes Amazon pays. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, you know, when, when you pay a higher percentage of taxes, you know, not paying more, just a higher percentage than, let's say, a corporation does, um, you know, it's definitely an issue. Um, now, again, we can't be, you know, dumb about stuff, but I don't know, man. You know, even if we took out and we stopped and we spent like even like three to five percent less on the military, man, that's hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, but yeah. So, yeah, Greg, uh, you, you pay a lot in taxes. We what well, we do. Yeah. Um, I mean, <sighs> I mean, like tax-wise, I mean, I mean, tax in this country starts pretty much if you don't if you don't know more than say ten thousand pounds, you don't you don't get taxed on that. Most people in this country gets taxed around twenty-five to forty percent, but every everything is taxed. You see, we, we, our tax system works in such a way that if you use it, you get taxed on it. So, fuel, for example, our fuel is about four times more expensive than what it is in America, and if you if you do a lot of mileage. 
they, you pay more tax. It's as simple as that. And cigarettes, alcohol, heavily taxed. Um, that's a stealth tax, really, because people know that some people enjoy smoking, some people enjoy a good drink. Each, each absolutely each their own, but it's, it's a heavily taxed thing. Um, when it comes to NHS, free health, um, I think that's worth its weight in gold, personally. I, I've, I've recently had a, a, a major hip operation, and uh, I didn't actually get that done on the NHS. I had that done privately. But the same doctors that I had privately work on the NHS as well. It just happened to be one or two days a week. They, they work in a hospital whereby instead of I'm in a ward, I'm in a... Uh, I, I got my own room, so to speak, at least for a few hours anyway. And But those people are at the moment at the forefront, at the front line and fundamental to our country, America, everywhere around the world, bouncing back after this has happened. So everyone is going out and clearing the shelves and buying all this stuff. You know, can be a bit responsible as well? Wash your hands. Don't go out binge buying or anything like that. We're not going to run out of food. We've got, we've got plenty of food in this country. Um, I think, in fact, uh, like companies like Tesco, Sainsbury's, Morrison's, all those big massive outlets where we, whereby we, we get food, uh, have actually just said in the last couple of weeks, they've gone up like 5%. And what they, they've got the food, they just can't get it on the shelves quick enough. So there's a, there's a big whole lump of responsibility that people have to have to think. It's a bit like someone said in the in, in the news today, Brandon. They said it's it's like Christmas. Hey, collecting bricks. Welcome to the stream. They said it's like Christmas, but without the four month build up to it, where everyone's going out there buying stuff and things like that. Um, so you know, we, we, you, everyone's just got to be a little bit responsible. And going back to the taxes and stuff like that, yeah, we are taxed quite heavily, but. Yeah, but it's about perspective, Greg. I mean, for instance, like a lot of people that I talk to about, like if we did like a Medicaid for all here, uh, about how our taxes would go up. But what a lot of people realize is like me, for instance, I don't know about other people. Um, I know it could be up or down depending. But for me, um, if let's say we did a Medicaid for all um, and they te we, we went, came out of our taxes instead of it privatized, um, I would save, I don't know, probably about $9,000 a year between deductibles and co-pays, uh, especially because I'm a diabetic. So I see uh, a primary doctor um, every three months. I see my eye doctor every four months. Um, I have to go to the dentist every three months. I see a foot doctor once a year. Um, you know, I got to get blood work done once or twice a year. So, I mean, between all that, I mean, I pay a lot of money, man. Um, and that's just me. I don't even have my daughter on my insurance anymore. You know, you throw a kid on there, then you're talking like almost double. Um, yeah, big time money. So, you know, yeah, my taxes would go up some, uh, but I would save several thousand dollars easy. Um, and also, it's gone back and forth through the years, but I mean, there's been times when if you have a pre existing condition, you know, you get shot down or you got to have the insurance for a year before they'll touch you or something like that. Um, but yeah. It's 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 a, like I said, it's really a matter of perspective. Um, yeah, and, and and you know what, Brandon? There's, there's a few things in life uh, that will always be. Uh, one of them's uh, death. Uh, one of one of them's uh, taxes, and the other one. <laughs> <I'm pretty sure. laughs> Lego. Yeah, I know, that's pretty. <laughs> Yeah, Lego is like a tax. <laughs> oh goodness gracious, man! Lego. I mean, where where would we be without Lego? Well, we, we probably won't be here anyway. But we wouldn't be uh, here. Rick, 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 <laughs> Chris, I, I hope that answered your question, my friend. Um, more ways than one. But, and this is the beauty. This is the one thing that me and Brandon love about doing these, doing doing streams in general, is that he talks about how life is in America. I can talk about how life is here in Britain. And, you know, we've got Moto there who can talk about stuff in Colorado, which is meant to be a beautiful place. My brother goes skiing there all the time, Moto. And it's you know, it's <laughs> mania. one of the key countries where our major outbreak occurred. So anybody who hit the sport last week is probably got it. Moto, that's where my daughter's at currently. Uh, she's uh, living with her mom right now out in Colorado. Hey, we got Yeah, you told me that. Oh. <laughs> where is it, though? 
Um, Longmont. Longmont. That's right. Longmont. Yeah. That's uh, it's a you know it's a tech quarter or I mean it's um, it's a suburb. Uh, see, that, uh, collecting bricks says, um, and, and I tell you what, this is this is quite touching actually. She goes, collecting bricks says, darling, in my neighbourhood, we are dropping off our own supplies for the older people who can't make it to the store. It's a great to see amazing people in my community come together. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. I really do think, Brandon, this will reset a lot of things, you know? In, yeah, I've read a couple of stories about people doing that, man. One, I've read a story about a little kid that took all of his savings. He had like almost $600 saved up and took it all and bought, bought stuff and made care packages for uh, the elderly, man. I, I, I swear I about teared up when I read it, dude. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, it's so nice to see people doing things for each other, man. You know, indeed, indeed. indeed. So we can all do our do a bit. Um, Brick Allen, uh, welcome to Garlegay. Garlegay, welcome to Brick Allen. Uh, I'll be surprised if you guys have never met before because um, Garlegay's on a lot of streams, and Brick Allen, you don't do bad as well. You're on quite a few streams as well from time to time. Mm -hmm. to make I think that's a good idea, collecting bricks. Uh, over here in the UK, we are, I mean, we must have a lot of money in reserve because they are going to be paying 80% of people's wages here. So that's that's quite, that's bloody generous if you ask me. But, uh, we'll see, let's, let us know how it's affected. You know, guys, get things off your chest. If you want to talk about Ninjago, we'll talk about Ninjago. <laughs> 19, we'll talk about COVID-19. We're easy, we're, we're all, we're all, Rick Lovers here, so you know. Try, I just actually, uh, Greg, I gotta, I gotta step time, out man. for a little bit. Okay, mate. Um, I don't know how much longer you'll be on, but if you're still on when I come back, I'll uh, jump back in. Yeah, okay, mate. I'll look out for you. Take care, dude. All right, man. If I don't see everybody, I'll see everybody later. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, Rick. Managed to make a little bit more progress on this thing. Let's take a look. Let's um. Let's move to the floor. There you go, my friend. Okay, okay. focus, focus, focus. Focus, please. No, it's not gonna, it's not behaving. Why, why are you not behaving? For the camera. I know, I'll turn around. I'll also be able to turn the, turn the camera around. And set it down before I drop it, and everything goes to heck. All right. Um, cool piece in the very end. It's a shout out to anybody who's around. That was pretty amazing. That looks brilliant. Yeah. Well, where's those those curvy elements? What are they from? Which ones? Uh, the curvy ones, the white curvy, the big curvy things. Um, that... These are these are hot air balloon pieces from the Friends line. Oh yeah, nice one. We're also used in the um, Sweet Mayhem Sister Starship. Yeah, yeah, the Sweet Mayhem Starship uses it too. Oh uh, yeah, which is I... funny. I made an engine using that technique, and then the movie came out. And they pretty much landed right on my aesthetic, so I felt vindicated as a builder. <laughs> I was like, yeah, guys, way to go. I don't know what those canisters are, but I think they're cool. <laughs> they look sinister. Let's try this. Let's hit it with a black light. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, that looks so cool. Yeah, I built this one to glow under black light. That's why I'm using a lot of transparent neon pieces. <laughs> so what are you going to okay. call Do you name your mocks? I do. Um, I don't, I just heard this one today, so I have no name for it. I don't know what, I don't know what I'm going to call that big dishy radar thing. Um, this one, this one I'm gonna call, I'm calling, I, I try to look the butterfly names before I name them. So I'm calling this one the glass wing, the glass wing glider. Do 
you collect stuff from the Friends uh, series as well? Well, does anyone in the chat room? Do they collect? Does anyone in the chat room collect anything from the uh, the Friends series? Oh, that's no. Because they, they did come with some good elements. I think Brandon collects them, so. I collect anything. <laughs> really. Do you, um, titanium, do you, do you generally stick with um, Ninjago, or do you ever sort yeah. of bring it down to other ones? I've mainly stuck with Ninjago. I bought a lot of Ninjago. Yeah. Oh, someone's dropped like, off that photo. For example. Uh, let's yeah, the balloon uh, pieces. Show us around yeah. your um, your stuff. There we go. Oh, nice. Yeah, the uh, the balloon pieces, those round pieces, made me think of this, which is the Raid Zeppelin in Jago twenty sixteen set. <laughs> That's cool. What was that set called? Uh the Raid Zeppelin. Uh, okay, cool. And then I also finished this. Jesus. There's a lot going on, and that's what I like about it. All right. Uh, talk, talk us through it. So over here, we got Wu and Pythor fighting. They kind of had a little bit of a, a rivalry thing going on in the show. Yeah. And so I wanted to include that in here. And then in the front here, we have Zane. He's uh, using his ice powers to uh, freeze one guy and make another fall off his feet. And then probably can't see it very well, but right in here... There's another snake. He's um. The, there are certain snakes that uh, can burrow the constrictor. Oh and yeah. And that's what that snake is doing. And they can burrow through anything, can't they? Uh, most material, I believe. Not everything, but. And that um, I removed the max to get a better look. We have uh, Kai here. He's facing off against several serpentine. He's got this little fire blazing around him. And up top on this kind of cliff thing, we have Jay up here, and he's uh, he's already electrocuted one of the snakes. Got one of them in pose right here. And he's about to get a couple more of them. And then over here, kind of in the back here, we have Cole using his uh, Scythe of Quakes and Earth Powers to blow several of the Serpentine off their feet. Although there is one coming up behind him. And yeah, there's also just like a lot of rock work and detailing. And then let's get the mechs back in here. We have a uh, Samurai X, which is Nia versus the, uh, the snake mech. Which is oh, a really nice. nice pose. And then is we that, also have uh, Lloyd. Is that in official? The that's Samurai yeah. looking mech. Is that an official one? Yeah, they're both official. That's quite cool. Yeah, and then Lloyd's in the hand of the other one using his powers. Yeah, that was basically it. So, bring, that, bring the um, samurai mech a little bit closer. Let's, let's take a look at that. Talk us through some of the elements in that. So, samurai mech's got uh, posable hips, posable feet. Uh, the, uh, the midsection kind of turns. Uh, this crown piece can actually pop it off and put it on the old style spinners from the first couple of years in Ninjago. So it was a nice element to include. It's uh, got posability in the arms. And uh, one hand has a sword, which can be removed, and the other has these claws. And it also has uh, two cannons. One's a laser cannon, so it doesn't actually fire. But then there's this cannon, which is an actual like pirate cannon, and it does fire. I don't have any ammunition in it right now, but it does. Yeah. Wow. And then in order to, to access Nia, you fold the helmet back and you pull this down, and she's in there steering the Samurai Mac. Yeah, I like that. That's a bigger version. I bought the, the smaller one the other day. Uh, I got that. It was 15 pounds normally. And I, I picked it up for 11 off Amazon, so I was, I was really pleased with that. Now also it's uh, rocket boosters back here. Yeah, yeah. We we we're we're um just in case 
I, I'm forever going on about uh, building Ninjago and stuff like that. And I love Ninjago. I just literally, I think I've built a couple of little bits of Ninjago, but I've been recently uh, quite a bit of Ninjago. And uh, what, what they, they do with um, uh, Titanium J52 and uh, London Bridge, but we're going to do a, a, a collab. We're going to, we'll just do a, a session, uh, a live stream at some point where we're, we're just going to build Ninjago stuff. And um, we might go for a mech or something like that, or wh wh whatever it will be, um, it will be Ninjago anyway. Hey, Coconut Bricks, welcome in, mate. It's great to have you here. Uh, Coconut Bricks says, uh, Jay, that. Uh, I am not a huge fan of Ninjago, uh, but they make great mech suits. Did you know, they, I, I agree, Coconut, and I was never, ever going to get into doing uh, Ninjago. And then uh, the more I was watching Brickhive streams and stuff like that, I, and, and Titanium would always be on there doing stuff, uh, he kind of inspired me to get a few, and then he kind of spiralled out of there. I've, I've even got, actually, I, was, I was really lucky, uh, Coconut, I actually got, uh, and picked up one of the last few that was in Leicester Square when it was open, uh, the Ninjago City set. And uh, oh, I was so pleased to get that. I'm absolutely very lucky. Anyway, Coconut goes the on. To you, you made a convert to someone, huh? Hey, no, absolutely, 100%. I just think um, Ninjago, I think, is, is really good. It, it's a team based kind of uh, story, which is nice. Um, it, it's good fun. It, it, so it's very, you know, very moral, uh, and it's good. And I think, bang for buck, the sets are actually very good value for money as well. Um, and, 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 and Lego seems to be going down this, this pathway at the moment. To, um, you see, that's another set I've bought recently, and I really want to build that. Yeah, that's a great set. Yeah, let me, let me um, I'll bring you to the format. Let's, let's take a look. Show us what the wings do. I've got a special action. So there's this little thing in here. It allows the wings to pop out. You get kind of this blades vertical look. And it looks really good. And then um, this, there was an older version of this in 2012, but it didn't have uh, spring-loaded shooters. This one does. Uses the uh, same cockpit element piece, but this version's a lot bigger, and it looks a lot better. Which is a uh, a common thing with the legacy sets. Here's, a, here's another vast improvement. Again, show, show, yeah, see, I've got that set. That's the one I really fancy doing. Show us um, what it does when it moves. That's pretty cool. That is very good. I'm a big fan of the diesel knot set. Oh yeah, that's, that's a, a really cool one. What what's, what says that? There. The diesel go and grab it, Jay. And grab it, Jay. We, we, we'll um, we'll take a look around, folks, at uh, Jay's fascination with um, all things Ninjago. Here we go, diesel knot. Oh yeah, that this one thing. has one of some of the best uh, uh, minifigure designs I've ever seen. Yeah, it's really Physical, nice. Very, very Mad Max style. Oh, crazy. Yeah. yeah, you're spot on, mate. That's absolutely Mad Max inspired. There's, there's so much packed into this thing. It's, it's absolutely wonderful. Lots of play features, like the cage and the yeah. cockpit. Back here, there's, there's a cage that can pop off. Fit a few figs. And then behind that is a little weapons rack. Yeah, like a, what is, what's it calling a palisade? No. Like, mm. Yeah, and there's so much packed into the set. It was really good when it came out. Great value. Yeah. I mean, that those cards on the back is huge. Yeah. Yeah, the wheels, the treads. Treads don't roll very well on like hard surfaces, but I'm sure on like a carpet, it would do absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Didn't they have like um, like rubber dots on the treads as well? They do. They have yeah. them on every other tread. 
but just sort I don't of know if not, improve it no. a little. <laughs> it just doesn't have enough weight on the front to yeah to get friction on the thread. Let me let me get another one here. A recent pickup of mine, semi recent. The Thunder Raider also has treads, but they work a bit better because there's okay. more more weight on the front, and uh, they have little rubber things on every single thread, and okay. also the treads are just smaller. This one's the one with the two vehicles in one, so you get the mech, and you have the little tank for Jay. Okay. Oh, what's the name of that one? The Thunder Raider. Yeah. Is that the most recent one? Because I think they've done it again, haven't they? Yeah, it's a recent legacy set. Oh, okay. So yeah, I bought this first day. I love it. So just out of interest, uh, Jay, what, what's the what's the difference between legacy and current? What, what, what's the difference between them? Legacy is a remake of an older set. I actually don't have any. Hold on, I do. Well, I do, but they're out of reach. I have um. Legacy is essentially a remake of an older set that came out several years ago. Oh, okay. So it's kinda, is it completely reimagined? Yeah, to pay tribute. It's like a reprint. A little. Yeah, kind of. a reprint of a comic. But it, in some cases, the sets are smaller, and in some cases, they're a lot bigger. Oh, okay. Some so are around the same size. Yeah, they're not cashing in on old sets. They're, they're kind of re they're doing something else with it. Yeah, it's like Star Wars does a new version of the set sometimes. It's a bit like that, except they actually get bigger instead of small. So, so Legacy basically like it draws in those older fans. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Are you uh, are you a fan of the old stuff and the new stuff? I'm more of a fan of the old stuff, but I also like the new stuff. The new stuff kind of depends. Here's um here's one that that they will be making a legacy set of in the summer, the Kai Fighter. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean this this is already pretty sleek. It was uh twenty bucks when it came out. The new Kai Fighter is forty. So I'm wondering what exactly they're gonna do to. To beef it up, maybe it'll be a side build. Is that the one that transforms into something else? No, it does. Um, just has like a little wing thing. I think the uh, the one you're thinking of that transforms is that's the clever uh, Star Wars shadow. Lego builders in the house, everyone. <laughs> I think the transforming one you're thinking of is the Kai's Mac Jet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's quite a season. Season. Yeah, that's a season twelve. I don't have that one actually, but and I have like I have lots of shelves all over my room. I have a shelf over there. I've got two shelves by my bed. I've got these two. That's I'm pretty cool. Funny. I said, I'm going to quick look at the chat. Guy again says hi, Duju Twenty. Hey, Duju Twenty. Welcome to the stream. Great to have you here, my friend. Um, welcome a lot. Uh, saying hi, Titanium. Okay. Uh, Coconut Rings is asking me, uh, what time would I be streaming? So, uh, Coconut, uh, I think you're East Coast America, um, and it's half past eight here. But so I'm guessing where you are. I think it's just a four-hour difference at the moment. So I think it's about yeah. half past four where you are. Um, I'm going to be streaming tomorrow at five thirty my time. So. Coconut, assuming that you are uh, East Coast, I'm guessing it'll be about 1.30 or something like that where you are. So, uh, so yeah, 5.30 5, 5 UK time. Uh, if, if you are East Coast, then obviously, um, so it'll be 1.30 in the afternoon. Um, but, yeah, it'd be great to have you join me, mate, because I'm, I'm building this giant mock at the moment. So it'd be great to have you in. And if anyone wants to see mocks uh, of Star Wars stuff, um, especially around Cold Wars era and stuff like that, please do check out um, uh, Coconut uh, Coconut Brick Studios' uh, channel. He does, he does some really good stuff. And everyone, please do. If you're new here, do check out everyone's channels as well, Ukulele Kids, uh, Lego Builder. Uh, even Garlicade has got a little bit of content 
up on her channel, um, which I love, which is um, very Ninjago orientated, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to see the giant mock your building, Greg. Yeah, it, um, it, it will be giant when I finish it. Oh, Coconut says he can uh, join me. So, here, Coconut, I'll uh, let me put, I'm gonna put my our email address in the chat. Uh, so, and then just send me an email and then I can ping you the, uh, the invite. Um, drop that through me, uh, coconut, and then I've got your address, my friend. And then I'll just um, I'll, I'll message you back uh, with with, uh, with the uh, streaming details. So it'd be great to have you on, mate. Uh, like I say, uh, London calling is all about just pulling people in that want to be talking, chatting about Lego life. Um, COVID-19, of course, and, you know, just getting things off your chest and, I don't know, just chatting, really. And, and I'll do to keep up with, this, with, with, with what's going on in the chat. But uh, let's take a look at Lego the Maniac. He's looking like he's Thanks got some, some tools. Okay, mate. So, so we can't see you. Yeah, Sorry, we can't see you. <laughs> you go. What, you can't see me? Yeah, I can see. You. Yeah. No, I was gonna right. say, in the U.S., we can't see Lego Masters V or AU. But does that mean that you guys can watch the Lego Masters, or can you? We, we we can't see the American version of Lego Masters. No. Oh boy. Season one of the yeah. UK one just came out here locally. Well, it's quite a Is it good? You clicking it? It's fun. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's it's like all reality shows. It's a little cheesy. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Since I find a lot of shows like that just they just look extremely fake. Uh, how they line up shops and and stuff like that. But at least the actual building parts are interesting. Our version was really slick in production. They put a lot of money into it, you can tell. Yeah. Cool. I, I'm basically done with uh, my sorting. Okay, well, look, I, I think uh, now would be a good time uh, for you to give us uh, a heads up about the, uh, the gig that you've got coming up in May. Is there anyone here who doesn't know about that gig yet? Um, yeah, you've got uh, Coconut, a few people out there. We've got uh, 10 people working at the moment. So. Ooh. Well, last year we um, we built, I did a 24-hour live stream. I don't have much to show here right now. Um, uh, we did a 24-hour live stream where I built the, uh, the UCS Millennium Falcon and, and like, straight so it took about 23 hours and uh, 15 minutes to build the millennium falcon and uh, the stream lasted for 24 hours and 50 minutes so i had about one hour downtime doing other things on the stream but that was a lot of fun it built it straight i did not die from it uh it was a great challenge it was sort of a celebration of uh, star wars 20th anniversary uh, Lego Star Wars 20th anniversary, which since that came out in 1999, 1999. Uh, so um, a lot of people seem to like that. And when the the big UCS Star Destroyer was announced, uh, a lot of people have been asking me if I was going to do another 24 hour live stream building that one. Uh, the problem with that one is that it's 5,000 pieces and the Millennium Falcon is 7,500 pieces. Which it's means that 5,000 pieces isn't quite enough for a 24-hour uh, live stream. So, uh, the May 2nd, I've decided to do a live stream 24-hour again to repeat the success and see if it's, a lot, it's as much fun building this thing. It's just the Executor Star Dreadnought Super Star Destroyer, uh, a custom mock build by One Case on 
Rebrickable, uh, which is about 7,200 pieces. And I think that's going to be absolutely brilliant. Huge set. I have the official Super Star Destroyer on display here. So after the build building, we will be able to compare the two and see, see the differences between the official Lego set and the, the custom mock that is this beast. So we will do, be doing that in a 24 hour straight charity live stream where we will be having a lot of competitions and challenges along the way uh, in support of yeah, charity basically, where people can donate, they will get, um, for donation they will most like, well, I haven't fleshed out everything that's going on in the stream yet, but there will be like raffles where your donation will go towards raffles, or your entry into raffles, and you will be able to be awarded prizes and, uh, and, uh, and yeah, and a lot of uh, good fun will be had, I bet. Sounds very good, my friend. Um, I can't wait. It's, um, it's going to be 24 hours of pure, massive building. Have you, um, what's the instructions uh, like? Have you, have you got the instructions with you? Yeah, I have the instructions. It's 950 pages. Um, and they are uh, decent. <laughs> it's as, almost as good as you can get from Rebrickable instructions. Uh, the only thing is that they don't have outlines for the pieces, meaning you, it doesn't highlight which pieces are the new pieces in the drawing. So you sort of have to check your, the list of pieces that you're going to build and then see where they have been placed, <laughs> sort of. Uh, and that's, so hopefully that won't, uh, take away too much time on yeah. the actual build. Um, I can see, oh, I opened my folder. Uh, yeah, since if I go into, I actually have it here. There we go. Oh, look at that. Yeah. There you can sort of see, well, if I actually align it properly. Like, you have to, yeah, you probably don't see my mouse cursor, but you can see here, you have to uh, look at the parts list and then figure out which parts or how it's different from the previous, right? Yeah. Or, or how it's different from the one you have currently. So, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to probably do a, I'm not sure if it's going to be a live stream, but I, I will be sorting all my bricks into bags for sections of the build. Yeah. Um, so it, so it will be sort of like a, sort of like an official set with numbered bags. So I won't, so I won't use up my entire desk for 7,500 pieces. Yeah, I, I've got to say, um, Doc, uh, Doc Samson, who's in the uh, in the chat, uh, gave me this idea of doing exactly that, which is how tonight I'm actually getting to build a little bit more than what I did yesterday. <laughs> so thank you for that, Doc. I've completely taken on board your advice. Ah, it's really good, um, Megalomaniac, and um, I'm definitely looking forward to it. So uh, I can't wait to uh, get around that. And, uh, and then one. What was the date again, my friend? What was the date again for your, uh, your charity gig? It's May 2nd. We start at... Uh, we start 6 a.m. GMT time, as far as I've understood. Yeah, that's quite cool. That's a good Six time. Or 7, I think, yeah. yeah. Um, so, so everyone look, check out um, Instagram and Twitter and all those kind of social things. And uh, we'll find out in due course um, when it's all going to be, and we'll be able to kick off and uh, get watching on that. I, I certainly will be retweeting stuff, so please do follow us on uh, Instagram and Twitter, and do the same as well for Legolomaniac. 
Uh, Megan Mania, have you actually got uh, Instagram or, or do you generally stick with Twitter? I have Instagram, yeah, and Flickr. So, yeah, if you want to just contact me on any of those, follow me and send me a message if, it, if there's anything. There's also legalomaniac.com if, uh, if you'd like, which lists all my social medias and there's a contact form. Uh, Good stuff. Yeah, yeah, so you can contact. So I saw Doc asking about how big this uh, thing is, and it's uh, 132 centimeters. <laughs> that is ginormous. Can you imagine that, Doc? That's actually bigger, Doc, than my desk that I'm working on from at the moment. That is ridiculously big. And how many pieces was it again? 7,284. Uh, Oh man, Doc, could you imagine me trying to build that? I'd be there, I'd be there forever. As long as I sorted it, I'd be okay, I think. It would be 260 years at that time, I think. I, I, I think that's, uh, again, I, I think you're you're praising me then by saying it's that true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's going to be crazy. That's my biggest uh, bricklink haul ever. Is it? Oh, that's incredible. Seven times, yeah. This is a crazy amount. I tried to find like um, there are there exists like wholesalers sellers who collect all bricks, like all the bricks of custom sets and sell them fully. Uh, but I couldn't find anyone who had done that with with this particular set. Well, nothing reputable, reputable uh, anyway. Reputable uh, resellers for that. Doc. 132 centimeters is about 52 inches. So longer than four feet. <laughs> hey, Book Studio, how are you doing? Good to see you, mate. Good to have you in the uh, in the chat. Great to have you here. Another great YouTuber, folks. Um, so do check out Book Studio. He does some great stuff. Um, Doc Samson, who's here as well, by the way. He's he's kind of stuff is normally quite quite general, but yeah. Uh, again, one of my one of my favorite YouTubers because he knows loads of stuff out there about lego and things like that and news articles and things like that so do check out his his site as well it's very unique uh you'll know what i mean when you see it all it's, it's great stuff and we, we're soon enough and probably like i said earlier on in the next six weeks a couple of months something like that when when the time is right uh we'll be doing uh a voltron uh stream together as well which i can't wait to do doc i think it's gonna, that's gonna be bloody amazing but i've just got to get my birthday first and then once it's my birthday, I get function. It's as simple as that. Let's um let's see what Moto's up to. Moto, you've been quiet for the last few minutes or so, and then we'll touch uh, base. Give me give me give me uh two minutes exactly, and I'll finish something up. Oh, okay. Okay, you guys. You caught me so close. You always, you always catch me two minutes early. <laughs> That's the story of my life, mate. That is. I know. Here we go, folks. There's the details of the stream. The mega stream, May the second, 24 hours. Building the execution of Star, oh, the Star Dreadnought by one case. I mean, that is, that is quite sublime. I mean, what do you reckon of that, folks out there in the chat? What do you reckon? That's that's de you know, that's definitely one to uh, watch out for. So, uh, titanium. Show us what you got on your desk, my friend. Uh, this is the Temple of Jitsu. It came out in 20, 2015, 2016, something like that. I think it was 2015. I don't remember. I, I think I got it in 2016, so that's what mattered to me. And it was it's about 2,000 pieces, and it's beautiful. Oh, it's not I've not seen that one. I mean, that looks like a really nice build of a, a, a cottage or something there on the left. Yeah, there's kind of a cottage here. This, this is kind of like a little shop. And then this is the temple itself. And then um, it comes apart in four sections. So there's the bridge, which just kind of sits on there. There's the, there's the shop, which a piece of bread just fell out. But uh, shop is pretty, pretty open. It uses the uh, garage doors as roof pieces. There's a nice look at the back as well. Then, let's see, gotta get the total 
cottage house. It's got, it's like a blacksmith shop, I think. What are those what bridges called? What are those bridges called, mate? Um, I'm, I'm interested to know what those bridges are called as well. What once you said because that that little house you've got there, that co uh, cottage, is that got like a special name? Doc, you, doc, you're up on your Chinese and Japanese stuff. What's uh, what, what is that called? Because I, I doubt they call it a cottage. They must. Have, I mean, is there a what what was that, Moto? Not looking, but maybe it's a pagoda. Oh, you know, it's a it's a proper house. Um, but okay. I'm liking having the trees on that as well. That, that looks quite good. It looks quite mysterious. Yeah, me. There's two stories, and the second story is storage for a glider that is uh, elsewhere at the moment. And then the first story has um, the blacksmith shop in there, like a little blacksmith area. So that um, so that Kai and Nia, who are blacksmiths themselves, you know, go in there and do some work. And then the main temple is uh, looks really nice on the outside. Got these lovely steps. It's got a statue of Sensei Yang. And um, hold on, who's Sensei Yang? I've not heard of him. Uh, he was in seasons five. He was in season five for an episode. He made a brief appearance in season six, and then he was the main antagonist for Day of the Departed. He's the one who created Air Jitsu, the, the little thing that the ninja could do to make themselves fly temporarily. They stopped using it in season eight, but but uh, he was a uh, he was around for a little bit. He's also a ghost. So there's um there's a temple itself, open back, which I'm okay with. Uh, it's got kind of like a little painting area up here, training area up here. You can just kind of sit and have tea down here, and then on the bottom there's this little thing, and when you press it in and rotate, you get like this little light show story. I was going to say, can you can you put your camera nearer to that? Because that looks incredible. I'll try. It's on my my desk, on my computer, but oh, yeah. There's that, like a couple of flame pieces and a snake in there, and the microfigs too. What was the set name for that? I think it was seven oh seven five one. No, that's pretty cool, man. That's a, I believe that was the number. So yeah, it's it's a beautiful set. It's probably my one of my favorite Ninjago sets to ever come out, especially like building wise. Yeah, Ninjago can produce some like beautiful architecture. What's your um, what's your favorite set? Uh, uh, what's your favorite feature out of those uh, three buildings? I mean, the, I suppose the temple is probably the best one. Um, but the out of the blue house and the the, the green outbuilding, what, what would be your favorite out of those? I would say the greenhouse. Um, I don't have them in here right now. I'll see if I can find them in a second. But there are a couple of um, little tiles with stickers on them that are in reference to the old Ninjago spinner cards. I have them somewhere. I gotta pull out my organization. Let's see if I can find them. But um, yeah, maybe this is one. Here's. Here's one of them. They have a little sticker on it, and it's supposed to represent the Ninjago spinner cards from the first couple of years. They've done these in several sets, but I like the shop a bit more. I also like the, um, the garage door roof pieces and the green color. But then I also like the blacksmith shop. I like them both. I don't think I can pick. Even the, even the bridge looks so nice. Yeah, it does look nice. It looks really good. We do do some little flex pieces. Are those bridges, are they, are they called... A, is there anything special about those bridges? Have they got some sort of significance to them? Um, I'm not sure, but... Do, do, oh, it's, it's difficult because they reference... They, they, they pull elements from Korea, Japan, China. Yeah. So it's not really one Asian country. It's really... They smash 
It's kind of like where they take medieval techniques from France, Britain, all of Europe, and then they kind of blend it into castle. So you can't really say it's one thing. It's kind of like a mixture, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a hybridization, just like castles and oversimplification for all of Europe, you know what I mean? Here's the okay. other card. I got, my, I got my stuff together. It came in. That's cool. Yeah. At least I, maybe maybe it is. Maybe it's not. In fact, I that might have been the wrong king card. Like the king of Ninjago. I've got I've so many of these things in here. <laughs> I think they look cool, man. They look brilliant. It's like a real proper eye candy. No, wait. I think this was the card that came in. I think Kendo Cole came in a different set. But this is the other card that came in. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Yeah. And they've had other cards in other sets. And they're almost, I think they've pretty much always been stickers. But nice to get them nonetheless. No, definitely. Okay. I think that's probably set. And how many parts was that, right? Uh, it's about 2,000, I believe. A little over 2,000. And what was that? Is that, uh, is that your, um, uh, My card, card collection. Oh, right. yeah. Just, just around the cards, and then we'll pop over and see what my are. Yeah, so there's, there were year one and year two. So year one had, like, the regular original suit ninja and the dragon suit ninja, as well as the skeletons as villains. And they had different cards you could play, lots of different things you could do. And then... Year two, you start to see more. It's got the ZX, Kendo, and NRG Ninja. And that's versus the Serpentine. And there's there's a lot of different cards. They tried some new things in the second year, some little some more building onto the spinners. They also added the crowns. There's a lot. And then something that was seen in the second year but not in the first year, after I get past all these cards, is um, these kind of combo cards, which use all four elements. And then I've also got a couple of like, really nice cards in the back here, like this one and this one. They're, uh, they're relatively rare. Okay. Right. What, do do, what do you do with these cards? Because that, that's something I know nothing about. How, what, what, do they, what do you do with them? And how do you collect them? So they were in the spinner sets of 2011 and 2012. Let me see if I have a spinner on hand. So I have a case because I have so many. But um, it was an example of a spinner. And you'd sort stick like a Beyblade Beyblade in here. Or... A little bit, maybe. I'm not familiar with Beyblade, but... Okay. You'd stick a minifig in here, give them a weapon, and then you'd set them up against an opponent. And the cards would help you um, increase your chances of winning. And they'd give you different abilities, or they'd take things away from your teammates. Uh, if anyone, I'm interested to know if anyone in the chat actually collects these as well. Uh, let us know if you do, what you do. It's sort of like a combination of if you've had tops hit each other and knock each other out with um Pokemon point systems. It's sort of a weird mashup like that. It's kind of so fun. here's like an example, shaky bones, which is where your opponent stands a character on one leg until a player wins. And the goal of the game is to collect all three of your opponent's weapons. So win three rounds. There's lots of lots of different cards that are here. There's um Hurricane, which is blow on a spinner until player wins. Yeah. Uh, let me get to some of the years two stuff because that is some of the the really interesting ones. I like that, man. In my Here's um, this was one of my first one of the second year. So fast as lightning, you could build it in this add-on on the spinner, and uh, these little add-on things would come in these booster packs, which were. Uh, Really nice inclusions. Yeah, no, they really are, yeah. Yeah. It took me a long time to get all of these spinners because I kind of missed out on a fair amount of them as they came out, but I slowly collected them over and over. 
Yeah, I think I finished the the main collection in 2017. Yeah. This was the last ninja that I needed. Well, hi, Brick Central. Brick Central's in the house, everybody. So everyone say hi to Brick Central. Welcome Hello, in, mate. Brick Central. We, Brick Central, we're just going through Jay's um, very deep and wide collection of uh, Ninjago cards. And, uh, yeah. Go yes, ahead, man. Lloyd was the last one I got, which I felt was appropriate because he's the green ninja. And it was, um, it was also a really cool way to get figures because Lloyd, for example, the only other set was $120. And um, for some of the characters, like the NRG ninja, they were exclusive winners. <laughs> and, I was, and like if you bought a lot of Serpentine, you could get a nice little army of Serpentine building. Yeah, that's where the majority of my serpentine minifigs are actually from, from the spinners. See you later, Lego builder. Lego builders off. Good to have you here, mate. Thanks for popping by. Yeah, so that's, oh, that's my... good. That, that, that is a fine looking collection. Uh, Moto. Yes. Show us what you've been up to. Show me what you got. Sure. <laughs> I have an 18 inch scale here, or. In metric, it's what, uh, 45 and a half centimeters, I guess. Yeah. And this one is exactly that. <laughs> so it's 18 inches tall or long. And, oh, managed to break it too. That was awesome. I got only one fragile part that's not behaving well, so I apologize, which I will get to at some point. Dodgy clutch. Yeah, it's it's a it's one of these cup pieces, and I'm gonna swap it out with a, a better piece. Yeah. But Ape classic chrome, light paper dish, so on and so forth. And then here I put uh, ice skates on one of those. Um, all kind of snowflake pattern things. And then kept on going, kept on going. Just added a bunch more detail kind of in here. Those pods are now attached and all built up. And cleaned up more of that area around the uh, hot air balloon pieces. I think that might be a Ninjago piece. I can't remember, but it's like a snaky thing. It's translucent. Yeah. For a minifigure, and I put four of those JMM. around. Confirm that one. Old Titanium J52. Yeah, Titanium would be the one, and tell me if I nailed it. <laughs> it's getting black light. Oh yeah, that's really cool, man. I mean, they really do glow, don't they? Oh yeah, yeah. Anything that's transparent neon. Or the white glow in the dark pieces, and then the light greens also fluoresce. And I've got a opaque glow in the dark dish, which is it's really weird. The way the plastic was mixed, it's half white and half glow in the dark, so it's kind of coming in speckled. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I'm using a printed pattern. The general grievous dish with the highlight tour and then the Jurassic Park bubble dish. <laughs> I like the use of the teapot. Which one? The teapot. The pink teapot. I like to use those. Oh, where is that? Oh yeah. The pink oh, rock pieces in there. Right spot. I know the uh, teapot or the uh, the lanterns, the lanterns. Oh right! Oh yeah, oil, tea cups, oil tea cups, Right? Yeah, tea yeah, the teacups. Yeah, teapots. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I did yeah. it because of the bar, so I could grab it, and then it's got a stud to stud cushion to keep it going. So that's how I was able to transition into that, into that core in there. And then a fun fact: the reason I'm putting translucent pieces in is anytime the grip strength of a regular 
ABS piece keeps popping. If you use the translucent pieces, I think it's polystyrene, but they're made out of a different type of plastic and they actually have greater clutch. Yeah. The one trick that you should put in the back of your head is if you swap a piece out with its transparent counterpart, if you're having a hard time making it stick, it'll actually clutch stronger. And that's how I'm able to get these long runs of stuff going is I'm always using translucent wherever I have th things start to fall apart. Is I, and especially if you run a translucent bar through stuff, translucent to translucent grips so hard, it's considered an illegal technique that Lego set designers can't use. <laughs> really, why is that? Um, they grip so strong that you have to have really strong hands like mine that works to Technic all the time to be able to pry them apart. Uh, or either that or you're gonna have to, you'll, you'll feel it if you like take if you take like a translucent cone and you ever run a translucent rod into it, mm -hmm. just keep going. And at some point you're going to realize that it's pretty much a lock. It's just locked in there to the point where it won't move. And you'll never get it apart unless you're really strong. But, uh, so there's a fun little tip for anybody who wants to make things that are insanely strong yet delicate is fall back on the translucent pieces. There, it's also the part where I'm... Um, uh, it it has great grip strength, but, but because of the uh, type of plastic used in uh, used in uh, translucent parts, they can actually fuse together over time if you put plastic uh, translucent parts together. Yeah. That's why uh, you rarely see many translucent parts stuck together in uh, in official sets. Well, that's what I say. It's now considered an illegal technique, and they've banned the practice for set designers to do that. <laughs> yeah. Who sets the standards for Lego? Lego does. Oh, okay. Uh, who in who in Lego? Is there some sort of panel or something? That um, no, they have a they have a QA team that basically will uh, emulate uh, connections over time. I don't know how the QA test it, but they age the sets ex in an accelerated fashion. And if anything warps, bends, splits, sags over time, um, they can say that it didn't pass QA, and you have to go back and figure out a new way to do it. Yeah, but someone must have, yeah, someone must have figured out over time that these translucent parts grip like a heck, and they also they're more brittle. So the stronger the bond, also the more brittle they are, and they tend to shatter. Um, so it's kind of like the the brown problem only on steroids. When they split, they really come apart. And some of the metallic elements too, I've noticed, are more brittle, but they grip a little bit tighter. Yeah, but yeah, just by fiddling with pieces and kind of playing with them, you can start to realize there's a subtle difference in the different clutching power, different types of uh, plastic that they use. And that's it for me. I actually have to get out and do a little hike with my, with my tiny art director. Okay, mate, you, you um, be, be safe, be careful. And be safe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to wash your hands. <laughs> always, always, yeah. Thanks for letting me, uh, let me show stuff and build with you today. Yeah, no, that's cool, mate. It's, it's great to have you here. It really is. <laughs> Really Bye. Cool yeah. Bye. Right. We'll, we'll probably be uh, streaming for maybe another half an hour or so. Is that okay with you guys? Another 15, yeah. 20 minutes? Good yeah, stuff. Good. Um, I'm going to answer a question in the stream. Let's take a look. What do we got? What do we got in the chat? It says uh, Brick Central. I think the brick heads look good. I also like the Razor Crest, but it's overpriced. And has a decent amount of stickers. Um, he says, uh, goes on to say that uh, love the mini figs too. A bit conflicted to get it or not. Yeah, that's a good question, uh, Brick Central. Now, by the way, folks, Brick Central, very good uh, YouTube channel. Please do check him out. He does some great content, very good news stuff, very good reviews as well. Um, comes um, entirely good stuff in the community. Um, I, well, what do I think then? What do I think of it? I think it is overpriced. Uh, I think I'm hoping that when it does come out, though, uh, BC, that it'll come out with some sort of um, maybe a gift with purchase or something like that. Because quite often sets, if you buy sets from, from Lego or Amazon, I think you can buy this on Amazon as well. I think it's an Amazon exclusive outside of the, uh, the Lego book. The, the set is always going to be an expensive one. And I think it's too overpriced. I think, I think with Lego Star Wars stuff, it's generally what a Lego City set would be priced wise, and then they bung on about another ten percent or so, maybe even twenty percent in some cases. But this is a set that's going to be uh, very, very much 
wanted and can, the consumer market they, they'll sell out in no time at all which is why i think there's been such a big um i mean it's months before it's not even now until september so i think that they're, they're thinking uh, that they're going to sell particularly well and they will because let's face it folks i think consistently the mandalorian has probably been the best thing to come out of disney star wars um at least on, on TV, anyway. Uh, not that they've had that much TV, I guess. But Rogue One was particularly good. I thought the last three Star Wars movies were okay, actually. The, the middle one was contentious, had some good bits in it. Um, but I think it ended well. I think they ended the trilogy quite well. Uh, but yeah, the that, 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 I think the figures are good. There's a lot of space in this new one, though. I've not looked at all the new pictures. I've got it, I've got it, see. Uh, I've not looked at all the, all the new pictures, but. It's very spacious, so I'm interested to see what they pop inside it and stuff like that. Now, as far as the Brickheads is concerned, which is uh, the Mandalorian and Child, that that that's I think that's quite good. We, we've actually thought if you guys, um, I'll see if I can get it actually, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll I might pop it in the uh, well, you know, you'll just look at just just look at our channel uh, after the stream. You'll see that we've actually built a custom mock of the Mandalorian. I think it's, I, I think a reflection in its popularity is um that we, we're only a small channel but there's actually been quite uh, that that's probably our most watched uh, video to date actually i think that's like around 425 or something like that which is you know maybe at least double our average at least so yeah uh, but let's wait and see if it's if it's if it's a good set brick central if it's a good set with some really good figures and they're well made because i mean let's face it the child aka baby yoga is the one that people are going to want. And I think I think it'll be worth it. I don't think it's mega too overpriced. I think it's okay, but Star Wars is always going to be overpriced. And if you've got a hot product as a business, yeah, you're always going to price it up a little bit, aren't you? Um, anyone in the chat have got any thoughts on um, what you think of um, Lego Star Wars and where that's at at the moment? Because they're kind of drifting a little bit at the moment because they, they haven't got anything to kind of stick to other than the Mandalorian. But of course. Uh, we don't get the Mandalorian officially now till Monday, uh, which is when Disney Plus rolls out in uh, in the United Kingdom. So let's see where let's see where that goes. But uh, yeah, feel free to throw us a load of questions in, folks. And if you're new to the channel as well, uh, please do subscribe. Um, we'd love to have you on board and be part of the LB family. Um, and while you're there in the chat as well, you play kid, Gala Gay, uh, Brick Central. Please do. Uh, subscribe to each other's channels. We're, 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 we're uh, nice and easy like that here. Uh, we're all good peeps, and uh, yeah, whoever pops in. So um, let's take a look at what Lego the Maniacs up to there. Oh, what is that? It, there we go. Look, here we go. The, the famous, the famous cat. So it's a beautiful colour, mate. Yeah, she's <laughs> lovely, isn't she? <laughs> she is uh, shedding her winter fur, so there's uh, more fur than usual everywhere. <laughs> uh, it doesn't come across that well on the camera because I have so much, so much light, but everything's covered in fur. <laughs> yeah, nice. she's beautiful. Yeah, there's um, not much what else going on here. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got going on there, um, uh, Titanium? Uh, well, I accidentally drop tested the back half of the Monasterius Kinjutsu, so That's I'm okay. currently working on that. You, you accidentally? Yeah, I was say. carrying it back to my shelf, and it fell. <laughs> I, I thought I had a crash bang wallet. Yeah. So that's what I'm working on now. Oh. Got, got, what about you, Greg? What are you working on? Well, I've um, where, where am I at the moment? Let's let's put let's bring this thing down. Here we go. So, what, what have I done? Well, I've, I'm on. I've done leg number three, and that's looking quite cool. I'm pleased with that. You can't just show the same leg and pretend you've done three legs, Greg. Oh no! Really? Look seriously. Look. Here we go. <laughs> there we go. There's leg number two, and uh, <laughs> there we go. And there's leg number three. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, of course. 
<laughs> there we go. How about that? Oh my. I mean, did, did, did you double your speed, you say? Yeah, it's fantastic, isn't it? Well, all three. Okay, I can say now they're so they're so tall. We use them as a wicket. Um, Brook Central says it's a great way to brighten up your day, Garlegay. Uh, Garlegay says, uh, "Bye Moto, bye Moto, hi Vigna, <laughs> yeah Viga." Uh, where did you come by the name uh, Lego the Maniac? Uh, from from the noggin. Uh... Uh, okay. Um, does it does, does it mean anything in particular? It's it's a play on the word megalomania. Ah, okay, okay. There's not much more than that. Lego and megalomania, megalomania, megalomania. Yeah. 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 It's a mouthful. I've got to say, your name is a mouthful, my friend. Uh, <laughs> it rolls up the tongue. Come on, megalomania. <laughs> Gargay says, hi, Big and Meow. And she says, um, Brick Central says, it's a great way to brighten up your day, Gargay. Laugh out loud. Brick Central is crazy 24 hours. It is a, it is a crazy 24 hours. I have. I've got, I've got three legs, Gargay. How's that? that? That's pretty good going, isn't it? That's three more than I did last night. If, if you want to see one that I, that, that I have um, finished, uh, let me just get it there. There we go. There's one, there's one I made earlier. How's that? You just have to bake it and then it'll be larger. Yeah, does, does this count? What do you reckon, guys and girls? Just need to let it rise in the oven. Yeah. <laughs> does it count? It's quite cool, though. I like it. It's quite oh, yeah, cool. I want know those. I have this thing. Let's see. Um, one moment. Three legs. You do make me laugh, Kayla. Oh, there we go. Now oh, that's the that's the equivalent of the other one that I got. The I, I forget what they call it. There's an ATM8 or something like that. Yeah, I think this is like supposed to be from from some of the latest movies or something. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, that's cool, man. That's really cool. I like that. That that came in a poly bag, didn't it? Yeah, uh, Cass sent it to me from Blocker UK. Ah, uh, yeah. Now, there we go. There's another uh, another classy um, YouTube channel. Uh, it's like Mrs. Uh, Micropolis, isn't she? Oh yeah, she has the Queen of Micropolis build. <laughs> oh, she's sure the, the brightness. Well, uh, that's better. Yeah, some more brightness. Here. Looks pretty damn cool. I'm liking that. Very nice. Well, I think I think that's probably um, a nice a nice sort of time to sort of wind down. I think and uh, bring a bring a little bit of bit of closure uh, to it. Um, Titanium J, is that cool with you, my friend? <laughs> no, I was um I was overlooking to see if I had dropped any more pieces. Oh, okay, yeah, bits and pieces, my friend. I, I said always look around the uh, the skirting board. You'll always find some stuff there. Well, look, uh, I think, I think we'll call it time, guys, on the stream. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Fisher Uh Very nice to have you here, um, Titanium J. Thank you so much for being here. It's been thank uh, you for having me. Um, thank you, yeah. as well, the Maniac. Don't forget, folks, to tune in for May the 2nd for his 24-hour charity gig. Um, Brick Central, thank you for being here. Gala Gay, thank you for being here. Ukulele Kid, thank you for being here as well. It's been um, fabulous. Thank you, Brick Hyatt, as well, for coming by. And uh, thank you very much as well to uh, Moto uh, for popping in. Uh, it's been great to, um, great to be here, folks. Uh, everyone in the chat? I love you folks. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, folks, if you want to keep, keep calm, keep safe, keep clean, and don't forget to keep on building. Take care, everyone. Have a fabulous rest of the day. All the best.